Wow. Hard to believe. 50 countdowns. Huh. So what should I do? Ah, what the hell, guys. I've given you guys some negative shit for a while, so how about something positive? Pokemon. To say that I haven't talked about this franchise is an understatement. I've done countless countdowns on this subject for a long time, ever since its conception. Hell, my first countdown on this channel, discounting the Frieza one, was Top 10 Favorite Pokemon. So I've come a long way through the good and the bad and the... Sorry. Sorry. Vomit. So, so what better way to do it by doing a Top 100 style Favorite Pokemon? Except... I do not have access to 20 other Pokemon, so I'm going to be doing a top 80. Why top 80? Because it's Pokemon! So, yeah, this is a remake of my top 10 favorite Pokemon, somewhat. Although this is a somewhat remake of that list, I will not be including any Pokemon from underrated Pokemon, none from the original list, and none from my top 49 list. I will give an updated thoughts on my top 10 favorite Pokemon near the end of this list. However, until then, this is top 80, I guess you can call it, next favorite Pokemon. Another thing, no Generation 6 Pokemon. At the time I wrote this script, Gen 6 was not released, and although at the time we now have the Gen 6 metagame, I already did a list of top 9 Kalos Pokemon with two of my friends already, back in December. So if you want to see our favorites, go to that video. Aside from that, the only other rule is they have to be Pokemon. Yep, that's right folks, no one per evolutionary line. So I can talk about multiple evolutions on this list, which is exactly what I'll do. So, I'm excited to do this shit, but, yeah, I mean, huh. How ironic though, Ampharest was on the original list and underrated, and she's getting a double case of denied. Aw, oh, Wave, I don't think you should mess with that Ampharest. Why, what'll it do? Oh, shit! Why doesn't he listen? Uh, whatever, let's just go to the transition. It can revive dead plants and flowers. Screw Toothpaste, give me whatever Meganium uses. Designed to be a beginner's wall, many people think of Meganium as the worst starter because it doesn't have the sheer force of Feraligator or the flashy attacks of the Fire-type Typhlosion. Well guess what? The Pokemon games are designed for a team of six. Now the starter only, a team of six. If you don't like Meganium because it's not a good wall, that's fine. But to say that it sucks because it's not as strong as the other two starters, I cannot agree with that because it's just as useful as the other two starters. It's just useful in a different way. Anyways, if you couldn't tell, I love the Meganium line. For one, it's more unique than a lot of the other starters in Generations 1 and 2, as it's more of a wall instead of an attacker. That's not to say its attack stat is bad though. In fact, Meganium's base stat is 525, which is pretty good for a starter. And with its Dream World ability Leaf Guard, it saves you from using Safeguard in your set as long as Sunny Day's out. Its moveset can also be used to support the team, with moves like Aromatherapy, to do screen attacks, Heal Pulse, and much more. I also really loved the Meganium line in the anime. That cry was so adorable. I loved its battles against Bugsy and Shuck, and I loved it when it was on screen. And as for the people that say, It's useless against Falconer. Well, guess what? Totodile and Syndic will have no super effective moves on Falconer either at that point, so get a Cheodude slash Mareep and suck it up. What about Morty? Catch the puppy and watch Morty's Pokemon get smoked like a Togepi omelette. Normal is one of my favorite Pokemon types out there. They're compatible with almost all types. They may be simple designed, but they're complicated to master. Deflecting nuts with its two tails is Ambipom. Evolving your Ambipom via double hit is a great idea. Ambipom is designed to be a physical sweeper, with its highest stats being speed and attack, as well as moves that deal with its weaknesses and resistances. 
Sure, it's not gonna win you any tournaments, but who said it had to be uber great? And with the ability Skill Link, prepare for your opponent to rage. One problem with Ambipom? Dawn gets one! I hate her. <laughs> wow, normal types back to back already? Already? That's an academy record. Screw you, Concrete, because Raticate can devour you faster than a Snorlax at a buffet. I view Raticate as a Generation 1 Ambipom, with the exception of lower stats and crappy abilities. Since I don't really have much else to say, I'm just going to give a little story. Raticate was very useful in my Generation 1 playthrough with moves like Hyper Fang ripping through my opponents like paper. And that may be the sole reason I like Raticate as a Pokemon in battle, because aside from that, it's crap. But it's still good enough to be on the list. Ever since I did my first collab with Shiny Coordinator, some have asked me why I like Love Disk. Stat-wise, Love Disk sucks. I'm not even gonna deny that. It sucks. But I never said this was a list of the best Pokémon. This is a list of my favorite Pokémon. I mean, look at this thing! It's a heart-shaped fish! SO FUCKING ADORABLE! Plus, I love that you could get heart scales from this guy pre-generation 4, because I loved using the move relearner in Gen 3. Yes, the move deleter and relearner were not solely introduced in Gen 3, yada yada yada, but still I liked using it. Maybe it also has something to do with it being a fish of romance, which I find a little corny, but still interesting. I mean, it's because it can make pink water. I don't know, it seems kind of cool. But, yeah. Love Disk is not the best Pokemon out there, but you know what? It doesn't stop me from liking Love Disk as a Pokemon, because not every Pokemon has to be on this list because of their power. You could say my reasons are shallow, but I like it, and that's not going to change anything. Here we have the controversial Pokemon Jinx. Despite it having Pokedex entries displaying Jinx as a dancer, which you may think, well, yeah, this would probably be like a physical sweeper, or maybe special sweeper, or maybe a wall. Jinx's moveset revolves around it being a special supporter. That's not to say it's special attack status crap or anything. It's very good, with moves like Ice Beam, Psychic, Lovely Kiss, etc. Plus, I like its dual typing of Ice and Psychic. Okay, there's the issue of the anime. I'll discuss this quickly. You see, a lot of people thought Jinx was racist when Gen 1 was released. And as such, Jinx was changed to purple following the second generation. Personally, I still believe that claim is full of shit, but because Game Freak never clarified what Jinx was based on, they share as much of the blame in this controversy. That's really all I have to say about it. Jinx was a pain in battle, but when I get one, it's great to use, despite its design causing controversy. Chatot. The Pokemon mock just as much as Bidoof because not only is it just a parrot Pokemon, but it's also very weak. I do acknowledge that it's not the strongest Pokemon out there, but it doesn't have to be strong to be here. I, for one, love the idea of a music Pokemon, because at the time, the only other music Pokemon was Jigglypuff, and what did we get in the anime? This. No comment. And having it be a parrot Pokemon also sealed the deal for me, because I like parrots. When they're not chatting! I'm gonna hurt them. <laughs> anyway, and giving chat out its own signature move gives it more props in my book for being unique. It may not be that great of a signature move, but it's something. Only issue I have with it is that it needs an evolution. My body is ready. I stated before that I don't think Lavender Town is that scary. The creepypastas are a bit generic, the only thing scary about the town is the Team Rocket plot, and killing a Marowak. Speaking of which, Marowak is a rather interesting case. Unlike some of the previous entries, Marowak is not a sweeper. Or rather, you could try to make a sweeper, but it'll be pretty messy. That doesn't mean its attack stat is horrible, it's just that it could have been fixed. I mean, it has great moves like Bone Rush, Earthquake, and Bone Club, its signature move, 
It can be a threat on the battlefield, but it's attacks that needs work. Want further reasoning? It's abilities, rockhead and battle armor. Why not up its attack stat? I don't get that. I mean, hell, almost every other Pokemon did in Gen 6. Why not Marowak get a boost in its attack? I digress. Marowak can be a good supporter with its high defense stat, and it can take damage from its three weaknesses well and still survive to make a counterattack. But I do have to wonder something. With Generation 2 introducing breeding, how does Cubone get its bones now? Remember, in Gen 1, Cubone got its bones from its dead mother. How does that work now? And so, we have finally hit Unova. If you guys remember my top 5 Pokemon generations, you'll notice that I put that at number 2 on my list of favorite generations. To this day, I still believe it's better. Sorry Gen 6, your metagame sucks dick as well as other things! But I'll save that for a future list. So, what way to better start off Unova with one of the starters? You know where I'm getting at with this? It's M Samurott! I know I've mocked Oshawa in the past, and I still hate it. But then it becomes Duwat! Not much better. Evolved again? Hell yes! I get that the final evolution of a starter is supposed to be better than the first two stages, but at least Tepig's line and Snivy's line at least have variety in their movesets and counters, and made me want to use them. Oshawa does not have that. Samurott's design is supposed to be a sea lion combined with a samurai, and its headpiece is on loan from Marowak's head company. Samurott's moveset is fantastic, with moves like Mega Horn, Aerial Ace, Ice Beam, etc., and handles a lot of its weaknesses very well. Hell, it can even use Dig to deal with those pesky electric types. It's mainly the moves that put him on the list, but another bonus is his attack and special attacks that are really good, but the rest aren't too bad either. Now, if only Ash actually got some balls and evolved that stupid, annoying son of a bitch! So, we meet again, Tangrowth. It may be a creepy Pokemon with its vines, but it doesn't change the fact that evolving Tangela is a great idea. I feel like I'm in a Zanami or something. Anyway, based on its stats, it's Meganium done better. That's right, it's a defensive wall. But its special attack stat is not too far behind, with a maximum of 350. Plus, its main abilities Chlorophyll and Leaf Guard are very good. Overgrow, it's friggin' useless. You're better off equipping a Life Orb or Miracle Seed to your grass type. With Chlorophyll, your Pokemon gets a speed boost as long as it's out in the sun. Which for most grass types is a must because they have low speed. Before anyone chimes in, yeah, I'm aware there are a couple of Pokemon that don't have slow speed, but most of them do. Sure, it has a shit ton of weaknesses, but it has not only status moves to deal with those pesky weeds, but it's the special moves to snip them away. Quiz time! What was the most memorable thing about Commander Mars? Her red hair, her voice by Amy Rose, or her parodly? Uh... Goddammit, wave it, see! Perugly is an interesting story. If you remember that battle video on Perugly vs. Lyford, I listed a bunch of its positives. But to those who didn't, here's the entry. Perugly is a good Pokemon to use in the lower tiers with its large moveset compatibility. Yes, folks, it's a normal type, and I love it for that. And its stats really work with it, because its second highest stat is Attack, with a maximum of 289. And like Tangrowth, it has a lot of status moves to deal with opponents that are stronger than it. Plus, I love its design. It may just be me, but I like casts like this. It's weird, but... Mm. Now to address the clone issue. Yeah, it may be like Persian, but how can we use that argument against the cat Pokemon, with the exception of Delcaddy for some reason, but ignore it with Pokemon like Magnemite's line to the Hone Edge line. Yes, I know that for some cases it's because the clone is better. But still, Perugly is a little bit better than Persian, with not only a better moveset, but also in stats. It has higher physical attack and speed than Persian. So really, that clone argument doesn't work. So what if it's almost like the Pokemon? If it's good, who gives a shit? <laughs> 